It's been about three hours since the board meeting. I want to thank both you gentlemen, Rod Beckstrom, President and CEO of ICANN, Peter Dengate Thrush, Chairman of the Board. I want to thank both you gentlemen for taking the time to answer a few questions, summing up the week, summing up today's board actions. Peter, let's start with you. ICANN deals with a lot of contentious issues. How contentious has XXX been? It's been one of the longer running projects that we've had. It started uh, a number of years ago and this applicant came in front of us and went through our processes uh, and the board turned them down. And then they went away and went through one of, our, one of our appeal processes, came back and this time they've succeeded. So yes, we've been considering this for some time. It's been said that the board basically ignored the advice of the Governmental Advisory Committee, true? Look, I think let's start with the existence of the Governmental Advisory Committee. We created that as a special place for governments to come and give us advice on important aspects of, of public policy that concern them. And any advice that comes from the, from the GAC, as we call it, we take uh, very carefully, with a great deal of respect, and we consider it very thoroughly. And that's exactly what we've done in this case. Uh, we, this is advice that we've received from them going back to 2006, 2007. So we've been thinking about this for some time. Uh, we went back to the GAC uh, in Cartagena and clarified exactly what it was they'd said and thought more about the advice. Uh, so this is the end of a process. The, the, the consultation that we had with them here in San Francisco was the end of a, a very long-running process. Uh, and I think, we've, I think we've done a careful job. Um, what does the dot triple X issue mean in terms of ICANN's dispute resolution? I think it's a testament to the accountability mechanism that we've created. Uh, this is the independent review process, so when the board makes a decision, a person who feels they've been uh, badly affected by a decision can take it away and get an independent review, which is what this applicant did. And that panel found that the board had acted improperly in declining the application on certain grounds last time. Uh, and so the board has accepted that. And they've, this applicant has come back, gone through another process. We've done more due diligence. We've thought again about the process. And as you saw today, uh, by a nine to three vote, uh, the board has decided that on this occasion, uh, the applicant has met the criteria. So I. I think it's, uh, it's, it's showing the strength of the industry self-regulatory model that ICANN is all about. Rod, let's spin off on that. You speak a lot uh, publicly of <clears throat> the multi-stakeholder model. How is the handling of this issue support the residents of that model of internet governance? Sure, I think it supports it quite richly. At first, if you look at the overall criterion for the program, it was developed by the GNSO a long time ago, reviewed by the community through a lot of public process with many of the different constituencies and stakeholder groups chiming in and contributing their thoughts, so developed in a very open way. The board used the process, came up with one decision. Uh, that was disputed, as Peter mentioned, overturned, and now the board has listened to the independent, independent review panel, which specifically is the body that had the responsibility to review that decision. And there are different stakeholder views uh, you know, on this topic as we saw at the public mic and through all of our uh, sessions. So I think that the board uh, did its uh, utmost to listen to different views and to then make a proper technical uh, decision and policy decision given the frameworks that have been approved by the community. Peter, much of the opposition to dot triple X seemed to be on a feared degradation of the DNS route. In that context, is that a valid concern or is that merely a smokescreen for opposition? Well, again, this came from advice the, the, from the GAC. The GAC asked to consider carefully what this meant. And so we took very senior technical advice from experts in this area. And we heard one of them talking uh, on the board today, uh, somebody from uh, you know, the, the liaison from the root server uh, committee that actually operates the root of the internet. And the view that we got from that was uh, that this is not going to have uh, any impact on, on the blocking that already exists. Has the, ha has the issue, the entire dot triple X issue, defined in either a positive or negative sense ICANN's relationship with the U.S. government? Well, the U.S. government has uh, a number of relationships with ICANN, and the most important one, I think, in this context is that they are a fully active member of the Governmental Advisory Committee. So they've been participating inside the GAC in terms of formulating the advice that's been coming to the board. Uh, we understand that the GAC, the U.S. position inside the GAC, and they've set it outside, has been that they actually have no position either for or against Triple X. Rod, where do we stand now in terms of a timeline as regards dot triple X? Uh, we really move into implementation mode at this time. So if you look at the resolutions, uh, the board has, has instructed me or the general counsel to move ahead with a contract with Triple X. 
uh, uh, to govern the overall registry uh, relationship that we have. We'll then also uh, simultaneously move on the technical front in terms of technical validation for the delegation uh, issue. Uh, and then once all those technical checks are done uh, and the uh, 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 board approvals in place, we'll move towards delegation into the root of the Internet. And then the rest is really uh, up to them. We'll monitor compliance from then on, but in terms of the development of their new top-level domain, the rest will be in their hands. Let's jump over to new GTLDs. Summarize for me in a nutshell. After today's board meeting, where are we on expanding that space? Well, I think today we saw a resolution that the entire community actually applauded, and they applauded it because they think they can get behind it. We've got a timeline taking this down to an actual launch date, which we've not actually had before. We've actually set Monday the 20th of June to be the date at which the board is going to launch this program. So that's a first. We've had other timelines before, but not one I think that the community and the board feels is going to be uh, so achievable as this one. Uh, and what we've done is, in addition to the many days of consultations we've had with the governments uh, since, since the Cartagena meeting in December. Uh, we, we've scheduled two more iterations, two more publications of the guidebook text itself, uh, two more periods of public consultation and a further intercessional meeting with the GAC, probably by telephone conference, before we get to that point. Why does this new timeline have any degree of credibility? I think, Brad, because the community is behind it. Uh, we saw that with the reaction uh, today. And that's because I think the community now feels that most of the hard issues uh, are on the table or behind us. If you look at what happened uh, with the, the GAC scorecard, for example, where the GAC gave us advice, said, look, there's these 12 issues that we think need to be addressed. We got to the consultation in Brussels. We took a third of those off the table. That's pr that was pretty impressive. At this meeting, we've taken another chunk off the table. And so we've got the next process, which hopefully will either resolve them or be quite clear that we're not going to resolve them. Uh, and so I think people feel that, that that work now puts us in a position where this is a very achievable timescale. Are there going to be a lot of members of the community going, we've heard this before? Well, I don't think so. As I say, we've not had, we've not had a timeline that goes down that actually finishes, not just with a board resolution, as I, as I announced after that to the, to the audience, uh, the, the public, uh, uh, to, the, to the community. The reason why we're doing it this way is so that we can actually have uh, bring the entire community together in a celebration. We're actually scheduling the, the launch party on Wednesday uh, after the board resolution. And I think you saw in that community you know, a great deal of support for that idea. In the past, the GAC has seemed to say to the board, you're seeking our advice, we're giving it to you, you're making a decision, we're not clear on how the advice we gave you fit into this final decision. Is that still a valid concern? Well, let's be clear about the XXX decision. We've published a 20-page rationale of the decision in relation to that, and we've gone through very carefully explaining uh, what the GAC advice was and what, what our reaction to it, to it is. Uh, and just, just by way of one example, the GAC advice was to be careful in relation to uh, a contract that might get us involved in administering content. And we've, we've explained in that that many of the activities we take in relation to our TLD contracts require the same kind of monitoring and supervision. So this doesn't change in any way the board's relationship or ICANN's relationship to the TLD operators. It does not start to make us uh, you know, content supervisors. Rod, in your opening speech, you reached out to people. You said in response to the, IANA, the, the government's solicitation of feedback as regards the IANA contract, please comment. What will be the comment of ICANN, the organization, but clearly the things that the high level principles are we want a longer term relationship. Uh, uh, we want to, to make sure that the community continues to steer the uh, domain name system, policies, procedures, and coordinate as much operations as possible. So there's not a broadening uh, of the role of one government vis-a-vis uh, -vis others. Uh, and we seek to uh, just to have some other uh, Im improvements in the contract and, and, and relationship from our standpoint. How important is this entire IANA issue? So much of the media attention on this particular meeting has centered around .XXX and new GTLDs. There's been very little written or talked about in, as regards IANA, but IANA is incredibly important, is it not? It's extremely important. I mean, it's a there's two there, there's three foundational documents in some sense that shape ICANN. There's the bylaws, you know, that were developed with the community in a process that the U.S. government helped to coordinate but, but approved by the community. 
Uh, there's the affirmation of commitments, which has replaced the previous agreements, and there's the an agreement. So the bylaws, we just uh, had some resolutions changing and tuning against it today, and that's gone through many cycles. Affirmation we got done in fall of 2009. The IANA is the next key piece. And so we see it as an op opportunity to improve the organization, make it further global. And I, we're, we're really looking forward to hearing the feedback that comes from the global community in response to the NOI, and that's why we encouraged everyone to respond, whatever their views might be. They might be pro ICANN, anti ICANN, or want it reshaped, or want it rebound. They could want any set of changes, and we really just hope whatever their thoughts are, they engage, because it's that wealth of different opinions and perspectives that will move this uh, uh, multi-stakeholder system forward. Let me follow up on that. Throughout the week, you mentioned multi-stakeholder system. Throughout the week-long meeting here, there's been a widely resonant and repetitive voice support for the multi-stakeholder model, so much so that it leads some to question whether this model of governance is at risk. Uh, I, I don't think this model is at risk. It's, it's, it's functioning so well. Yes, there are clearly other groups that would like to take over parts of the, the mandate or the scope or the portfolio, but the reality is we know this model is working because the Internet works. And the internet continues to go through tremendous growth, tremendous diversity. You look at the richness of the policy pro, uh, practices, um, and a policy development process, the best practices, all the efforts going on here. It, it, I mean, I don't know how you could ever match that in a top-down system. Can I just add two points? Uh, I agree with uh, Rod's description of it. We actually heard from two very important people today who spoke out very positively in favour of the model. The first was President Clinton at the gala. It was, his and it was in his administration that this was set up, and he still favours this kind of model for this kind of exercise. And the second one was from the current administration. Larry Strickling, in his speech, spoke out very positively about how good the multi-stakeholder model is, and particularly in relation to managing this kind of operation. So I think, you know, hist historically and, and currently, we've got a lot of support from people. The picture you two are painting of the relationship between this organisation and the US government is much rosier than that which you hear in, in hallway conversations throughout the week. There is a lot of genuine concern about ICANN's relationship with the U.S. government. What you two gentlemen appear to be saying is not so. It's a very workable, functional, qualitative relationship. It's clearly an extremely constructive and productive relationship. I mean, we, I have regular meetings with uh, Assistant Secretary Strickling. Our staff have regular meetings with the Department of Commerce. Peter served on the ATRT with uh, uh, Assistant Secretary Strickling. There's many different touch points between our organization as well as more broadly across the uh, U.S. government. Very productive overall. And in, in, in any good relationship, I mean, we are stewards for the root of the Internet, among different things. You know, that's a very uh, uh, serious role. It's, a, it's a, a big responsibility. These are tough decisions. It's very understandable that parties might have different opinions. I, and we think it's great, actually, that the U.S. government, when they have thoughts and opinions, are sharing those publicly with the world, you know, post, posting uh, letters on our website, such as they did in December. That, that's, that's a very transparent process, and if anything, just affirms uh, how important ICANN is and, and the whole multi-stakeholder community and how the model works. So I think it's a very, very constructive and functional relationship. Peter, let me ask you a final question. Between now and the next meeting in Singapore, what are the critical timeline points that you see between this meeting and that meeting? Well, uh, uh, in relation to the new GTLD program. Uh, in relation to any issue. Well, I think the, the most obvious one that's going to be that we'll be working on on that uh, is the new GTLD program because there's so many steps that have to be met. Uh, but I'm confident that we're going to meet those. The, the first is we're expecting to receive a written report uh, in re to a written reply from the Government Advisory Committee to our last paper. Uh, we're looking at publishing a final scorecard showing really what the areas of, of agreement are and what the areas of disagreement, if any. Uh, and that's going to be quite an important document because if there are still any areas of disagreement, we're going to have one more final conference, probably a teleconference with the GAC, to try and do that final resolution on those. And then under the bylaws, we will have to publish, as we've done today, you know, a reasonably detailed rationale of, of areas where we, if we're going to, where we disagree with the GAC. Then there's production of the actual guidebook itself. People will want to have a look at that, look at the text. And then, as I say, there's that final meeting on, on, on Monday, June the 20th, uh, when hopefully the board will give that uh, resolution to go ahead. So that, that's, that's quite a lot of work for, for our very, very diligent, hardworking staff who've been supporting this process uh, tremendously through the, through the last months and years. So that's, that, 
that's quite an opportunity for, for us and for the community to actually complete this project uh, and have a celebration. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Brad. You.